This is the movie Planned Parenthood does not want you to see. So if you're not subscribed to my other channel, Peace, Love, and Fruit, here on YouTube, or if you don't follow me on Facebook, then you probably don't know anything about me, but my name is Brittany. I am a 30-year-old mother of two beautiful girls married to my best friend. I am a libertarian, or I should say minarchist-leaning libertarian, and I am pro-life. If you are here from my other YouTube channel or from my Facebook page, hi guys, welcome. Thank you so much for showing your support. I appreciate every one of you watching this video, whether you're new or whether you came from Facebook or YouTube or Instagram or wherever. But definitely let me know down below where you came from. So today I'm here to talk about the movie Unplanned. Now, I'm not going to give a review of the movie, although I do love the movie. I thought it was amazing. Definitely the best Christian film I've ever seen and I would say the most important movie of my time, maybe even, or at least one of the most important movies of our time. I honestly believe that it is very important that everybody go see this movie and do some research into Abby Johnson and some of the truths that she has exposed about Planned Parenthood. But I'm not here today to expose Planned Parenthood or anything like that. There's plenty of videos on YouTube doing that already. I'm here today to tell you guys the four ways that this movie changed me. I didn't think this movie was going to change me at all. I really didn't think it was going to have nearly the impact on me that it did have. I was basically pro-life before going to see this movie, but I did have an epiphany that I was actually being more pro-choice than I thought, and I will share that with you guys as I go along. But I just wanted to definitely be honest with you guys that from the time I was a little kid or knew what abortion was, I didn't know what abortion was when I was a little kid, but from the time I learned what it was, I always felt very, very pro-life. It was something I knew I would never do, um, and I have been very judgmental of people in the past, and that's something else that I will get to here in a minute. I've actually been thinking about starting a political channel for quite a while. Um, I like to keep up with what's going on and I have a lot of opinions and things like that. But for the past few years, I kind of just stopped caring. I mean, I don't want to say I stopped caring, but I, I wasn't paying as much attention to politics. And I thought, you know, I'll just be happier if I don't pay attention to it. And while that was true, I felt like I was asleep. I wasn't paying attention to what was going on. But since seeing this movie, I am definitely feeling more politically active and wanting to have this channel and talk about politics and be more open. I definitely feel like now is the time to speak up for life and I want to do that. So really the movie is the reason I'm here today. I don't know that I ever would have bit the bullet and actually done this. I really don't know. Um, but this movie lit a fire underneath me. And it's not just the movie, you guys. I have now read the book. I just finished it on Audible today, so I didn't read it. I listened to it. And then I've listened to the soundtrack multiple times. I love the soundtrack. It sounded like I said soundtrack. Soundtrack. Um, I absolutely love it. And you guys, I'm not a Christian. I just want to say that I'm not religious at all. But I love that album. And it's really Abby Johnson. She inspires me. I want to use my voice to speak up for those who don't have a voice. My family is LDS, just a little bit of background. Um, I was raised LDS, but for most of my adult life, if not all of it, I've basically considered myself agnostic. Um, there could be a God, maybe, maybe not, and I don't really care either way. That was kind of my attitude towards God. But I have pretty much always been pro-life, and for me, it didn't really have anything to do with God. It was the fact that it was not the woman's body to choose what to do with. You know, her body, her choice never made sense to me. I was like, no, that's a different person's body, and you're taking the right to life away from another human being. That's the way I saw it. And that whether there was a God or not, ending someone else's life is wrong. That's just the way I've pretty much always felt about it. So my parents told me I needed to go see this movie for weeks before I actually did. And honestly, you guys, I didn't think I needed to. I was like, I'm pro-life. I already know. I don't want to see it. I had heard that there was a scene that showed an abortion. That's what actually the story is. If you guys aren't aware, if you guys don't know what Unplanned is, it's a movie about Abby Johnson, who worked for Planned Parenthood for eight years. She was actually the clinic director and ended up quitting and going completely pro life. And what made her change her mind, which I, I don't want to give any spoilers, but this is a spoiler. Um, it does happen the first few minutes of the film though, but she sees an ultrasound guided abortion and what she sees there changes her life forever. And I knew that and I didn't really want to see that scene. Um, because I look up pro-life and pro-choice things on YouTube, I love debates. So I like to look up like 
best pro-choice arguments, best pro-life arguments. I, that's just how I am. Um, I always look up the opposing side too because I find that extremely interesting. Plus, I want to know how to rebuttal them later, you know, if someone wants to use one of those arguments against me. Also, I do want to see if there's any weight there, if there's any truth to it, right? So because I'm always looking up these debates and stuff like that, I think that's the reason that um, the scene, the abortion scene, was recommended to me from the Unplanned movie. And... I watched a few seconds of it and this was before seeing the movie and I didn't want to finish it So I'm like, I don't want to go see that movie. Like I really just don't want to see it My husband didn't want to see it. He knew it would make him sad. He's pro-life as well And I did ask him I did ask him if I could say that on here He said I could so anyways, he's pro-life as well And he's just like I don't want to see it. It's too sad And then I realized like it's really important to show support, right? Um, Hollywood did not want this movie to do well. There were many people in Hollywood saying to boycott it um, you know, all the people, what is that dog doing to that cat? Oh my God. But every, everybody that I had heard who had seen it was changed by it in some way or like said it was the best movie ever or just opened their eyes in so many ways. And I thought, okay, you know, if that's true and you know, it's a pro-life film, I should go show my support. Now I just want to be clear. I was not showing my support and my husband was not showing his support because this is a Christian film. So we would have been annoyed if it was way too godly. I'm just going to be honest. And it was. It was in there. God was in there for sure. But I, I'm i glad that God was in there because this is going to sound really, really corny. But I felt God. I felt him in that theater. Him, it, um, whatever. I don't necessarily know that God has a sex. I don't know that I believe in God the way other people believe in God. I'm still not religious, but I definitely felt a higher power. Even if that's just source energy that we've all sprung from, I felt something in that theater. And I honestly believe that everybody around me did too. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. Everybody was crying. The theater was full and I was late to the game, you guys. Like I just barely saw this film last week, last Tuesday. No, the Tuesday before, so it's been two weeks. And it changed me, and that's what I'm going to share with you today. But also, I've felt a presence with me ever since. I haven't felt alone. I felt like there is a higher power with me and that I'm led. I'm divinely guided, actually. Like, if I pray for an answer, I almost always get it, whether it's the answer I want or not. And I'm building this relationship with God. And it's very personal, but... I just wanted to share that and I also do speak to the agnostics and atheists because I was agnostic for you know I've considered myself agnostic for almost my entire adult life there were even times in my life where I would say I was pretty much atheist didn't believe in Satan or God just didn't believe in any of that stuff um, and you know don't be afraid to go see this movie thinking God's gonna be shoved down your throat because if it had been I don't think I would have felt it um, because very, very highly religious or highly God things sometimes make me uncomfortable. And it didn't. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, but that's the first way it changed me is it did help me to find God again. Now, if you're agnostic or atheist and you don't want to find God, which I didn't want to either. I wasn't like looking for God. I didn't feel like I was missing anything in my life. If I'm honest, I'm spiritual. I always have been. I always have been a person who meditates. I'm into yoga, things like this. And just being... And I've always read like spiritual texts, like books and stuff, not the Bible. Actually, I have. I've read the Bible once. And I've read the Book of Mormon twice. Um, but that was when I was a teenager. Anyways, um, I digress. So don't be afraid that God's going to be shoved down your throat because he's not. But at the same time, the peace that I found from having God back in my life has been amazing. So one of the ways that, not the movie, but Abby Johnson has changed me, um, I've gotten more and more involved and looked more into like Planned Parenthood and her story, but other people who expose Planned Parenthood and just truth. I'm just trying to find the truth because one of the things that the film really woke me up to are the lies that Planned Parenthood feeds that are basically now common knowledge in this day and age and amongst people my age. Um, it's actually quite scary how much of their lies are just regurgitated by the left or and just not even just the left. I have some pro-life conservative and libertarian friends and pro-life anarchist friends. Um, and they all seem to regurgitate and say the same things, which I feel are lies from Planned Parenthood. I just believe that women deserve to know the truth. And I do not believe that Planned Parenthood is pro-women at all. But I honestly had just given up. I'm like, I'm not going to vote, whatever. 
never again. So basically I was pro-choice because I really firmly believed that women were going to get abortions either way, whether it was legal or not, and we can't stop them, and it's happening anyways, and I'm not going to vote, so let the women do what they're going to do. Even though I was very vocal on Facebook and being like pro-life, I more was like poking I feel like I was more like trying to poke at my friends and people I knew who were pro-choice um, But the truth of the matter is at the end of the day I didn't do crap to save the unborn or you know to promote life I didn't do anything besides raise my own two little girls through watching Abby Johnson I've realized how important it is to vote and become politically active and mainly in your state or you know locally so I've become politically active and I am planning on voting going forward which I honestly thought I was never going to vote again. But I've realized that by not voting, by not speaking up like in a meaningful way besides like posting on Facebook, right? Being a keyboard warrior. Um, by not doing any of those things, I realized that I definitely was being pro-choice, right? Um, I wasn't helping the situation in any way. So that really hit me and I realized that I need to be a voice for the voiceless and vote and, you know, at one time slavery was illegal. And if nobody had voted, so just because something's legal doesn't make it right. Imagine if nobody had stood up and said, you know, this is wrong during slavery or the Holocaust. So let me wrap it up. The first way that it changed me is I found God. The second way it changed me is that I'm now going to be voting again. And the third way is that it woke me up to the lies Planned Parenthood has sold the women in this country and has made me decide to become an advocate for these women and help them find the truth. And the fourth way and the way that was the most shocking to me and what I did not see coming was that Abby Johnson's story has humanized abortion workers, women who've had abortions, my own friends and family who've had abortions, and you know, abortion doctors, abortionists, abortion workers. It has humanized them for me. And I love them and the judgment is gone. And dehumanization is the only thing that allowed the Holocaust to happen or us to own slaves at one time, right? We had to dehumanize a whole group of people. Right now, you guys, in this country, the unborn are dehumanized. But I no longer want to judge these women. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in loving them, hearing their stories, hearing what they have to say, and being an advocate for them, being there for them, helping them realize there are other choices, and when they're being lied to. I am seeing a lot of atheists and agnostics becoming pro-life, and it's because of science. I want to quote Abby Johnson here. I wrote this quote down so that I could get it word for word, but she said, our job in this pro-life movement is not simply to make abortions illegal. Is that a goal of ours? Absolutely. But we will not be able to simply legislate it away. Our goal must be to make abortion unthinkable. Abortion is the only medical procedure that is considered a failure if the subject lives. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will always remain pro-life, pro-liberty, pro-love. Will you? Bye guys. Bless up.